So hi again, uh, welcome everyone. I'm very happy to be with you today for this new uh, Kailabs uh, webinar dedicated to, to Proteus, our product for space division and multiplexing. Um, my name is uh, Tanguil Guenik and I'm product manager at Kailabs. I'm in charge of the Proteus products and also all the new application uh, at Kailabs. Uh, this webinar is not a standard one uh, because we are going to realize a live demonstration in a few minutes in order to show how our systems work and our ability to manipulate the mode of the light uh, thanks to our unique technology, uh, the multiplane light conversion uh, one. Uh, fortunately, I won't be alone to lead this webinar. I will be with uh, Marie Gauthier, who is a junior uh, product manager, and Clementine Palestro, uh, event and communication officer. Uh, if you have any questions during um, uh, the next minutes, uh, feel free to ask them in the bottom right side of your windows. I will select all of them and try to, to answer them as clear as I can at the end of the, of the session. So, uh, but yeah, as always, let's start by explaining uh, quickly who we are and what we propose at Kailabs. Um, so uh, who we are, um, we are a deep tech company. Kylabs developed a few years ago a unique uh, patented, patented technology, which is the MPLC, as multiplane light conversion. And more generally, uh, we are experts in beam shaping. We are now more than 50, uh, 55, I think so, with 20 PhDs, and we are in capacity to develop, uh, manufacture, and sell innovative optical uh, components. Um, we are located at Rennes in Brittany, in the west part of France, and we will be moving to a new, much larger site in the near future to, low, to allow us to bring all of our, of our activities together in uh, only one large site. And we have also an office at, uh, at Paris. So our expertise is uh, beam shaping, what we call exactly with uh, beam shaping. Um, it's possible to play, uh, especially for telecom application, on several properties of the light, especially inside an optical fiber, like the power, the wavelength, the polarization, and the phase. And at Calypse, we, we allow the addition of a new degree of freedom, thanks to beam shaping, which is the shape of the light, such as the mode of the light in a multi-mode fiber, for example. And I will explain in a few minutes uh, what it is. Um, this has a lot of area of, of application and we developed a range of products around our complex beam shaping expertise uh, and the, the MPLC also. Uh, let me present them. First, we have uh, the Canunda range, which is uh, specialized into the improvement of industrial uh, catching lasers. So we shape the light for really high power laser beam. We have also after the Aruna product, uh, Aruna proposes to improve existing legacy network, and the idea is to, to update the old multi-mode uh, telecom architecture into single mode one without uh, uh, deploying new single mode fibers. After we have Tilba, Tilba is dedicated to the free space uh, satellites communication. Uh, Tilba can increase the power of the laser at the emission side, uh, thanks to coherent beam combination technology and can also decompose and recover a turbulent signal at the reception side into a, a unique single mode uh, fiber output. Custom also, custom is not a product relative to specific and new development for applications in defense, aeronautics, automotive or uh, biomedical. And today I'm going to talk about SDM and our product uh, for that, uh, which is Proteus for the future telecom uh, networks. So what is um, the, um, the summary of, of this, uh, the, the schedule of, of this webinar session? Firstly, after a short introduction, I would like to spend some time to explain what is uh, a mode of the light. Uh, indeed, we, we talk about single mode fiber and multi-mode fiber, but it's important to detail what we are going to, to show after during the live demonstration. And secondly, after I will spend some time to explain how our technology works, uh, the multiplane art conversion one. Uh, it will be next uh, the live demonstration time. 
today we want to show you two kinds of demonstration. A first one to observe some light modes uh, generated by the MPSC at the output of uh, the Proteus component. And also to show you how we characterize the, the performance of our components and how we realize what we call uh, our back-to-back cross-talk and insertion lasted measurement. In the last part of the show, <coughs> sorry, we'll present our Proteus product line and uh, what uh, are also the product option uh, possible. And finally, where well, we have a lot of use cases for Proteus, most of the time we talk about our uh, world record of bandwidth inside a fiber, but we have another interesting one where we realize a specific configuration in direct telecom, um, direct detection telecom configuration, where the mode uh, mixing phenomenon can be uh, a, huge, uh, a huge issue. So to introduce uh, what is SDM, uh, it's important to, to remind you that the last decades, um, new techniques have been developed in order to meet the ever increasing demand for more bandwidth in the fiber optics network. Um, the channel limit, it's uh, the capacity of a channel. It's the same thing. It's theoretical, the maximum information transfer rate uh, on that channel for a certain level of, uh, of noise. And today the channel limit have been reached uh, in single mode fiber. And we have to investigate in, in all the solutions to push back uh, this barrier of uh, limitless bandwidth. Um, multiplexing um, consists of sending a multiple information stream over a single transmission medium. Uh, in, in, in telecommunication, the medium, of course, used for it is uh, the optical fiber itself. And the well-known and maybe the most one uh, and widely uh, used, um, it's the wavelength division multiplexing, which consists of creating information channels using separate colors of laser light, I mean the wavelengths, and each wavelength represents a parallel and uh, separate information channel. Or, however, the solutions are needed to, to increase the number of information channels and meet uh, the increasing uh, bandwidth requirements. And it's, it's difficult to further increase the number of uh, WDM channels because the channel limit uh, is almost reached in single mode fiber. And of also, multiplying the number of fibers in the cable is not viable from an operational uh, point of view, especially for, for maintenance, for example. So space division multiplexing is one solution for that, a technique to allow to push back uh, this barrier of limitless bandwidth. It consists of using the special modes of light, which act as uh, independent uh, information bearing channels, while remaining compatible with other multiplexing or uh, data modulation uh, technology. So what do you need for special space division multiplexing? You need first a max to encode the information and a dmax to decode it and between them free space or few mode or multi-mode fiber to, to allow this uh, multi-channel uh, transmission. Um, light uh, as a, an electromagnetic, electromagnetic wave whose uh, field can be uh, expressed, by, expressed by solving the propagation equation from uh, Maxwell's equation and each solution of this propagation equation corresponds to a propagation mode. This is what we call the mode of the light. And the set of modes, uh, families, form, uh, forms a mathematical base uh, with orthogonal uh, property. And depending on the optical waveguide, there are different families of modes. The most famous ones are the Gaussian family, such as uh, LG, uh, Lager Gaussian, or AG, Hermit Gaussian ones. But we can find also the linear polarized mode family, which is commonly used in the step index optical fiber. And once all the assumption of the, the homogeneous and cylindrical guide are made, the propagation modes can be uh, de de determined like that. Um, about um, the optical fiber families, uh, we, of course, you probably know, uh, know them, but we find several types of fiber. Uh, first, we can divide them in two families, the single core one and the multi-core uh, one, multi-core as MCF. 
and each of them can after integrate three kinds of fiber the single mode uh, which as its name uh, suggests propagates only one mode the few mode fmf which transmits uh, some modes and has a slightly larger core diameter and of course multi-mode fiber which have a much higher model composition and today most of the the sdm architecture are using uh, fmf or mmf fiber but we can find also uh, more and more mcf uh, for multi-core uh, multi fiber um, there is two kind of uh, families of optical fibers, uh, graded index and step index. Um, there are other kind of family, but this is uh, the main ones. Um, at Kylabs, we are generating a, a LP mode for this kind of step index fiber, which have an in uniform refractive index of the core and an abrupt uh, change at the core cladding boundary. And we have also the graded uh, index fiber with gradually uh, variation of the um, of the refractive index of the core, and we can max LG mods, but also uh, AG mod. But uh, at Calabs, we obtain the best performances uh, for this type of AG family. Uh, there are no difference at the end in terms of performances between AG and LG. It's just a linear combination to convert uh, LG basis into AG basis. Um, but yeah, uh, we obtain better performances uh, with, with AG mods. And of course, SDM uses the orthogonality properties of the mod light to create new independent data channels thanks to them. And we obtain at the end uh, this kind of architecture and all the converted mod circulates uh, the information in the multi-mode fiber. And as explained before, we demux uh, the light at the end of the path to, to recover uh, the original single mode information. So just to finish um, yeah, this, this kind of SDM uh, presentation before explaining our technology, how can we evaluate the performance of a mod multiplexer? The first one, of course, uh, is the number of inputs, so the number of modes, which correspond to the number of new potential channels. Uh, Another major criteria here is the uh, model selectivity or crosstalk, uh, which characterizes the independence of one channel from another one. Uh, there is also the optical insertion losses, which gives the transmission of the component for each channel. And finally, a criteria that is um, always tricky to evaluate because it cannot be quantified, but it's a capacity for integration and, and industrialization. And our solution at Kylabs uh, for SDM is based on the MPLC as multiplane light conversion. Uh, it's a patented technology. Um, yeah, it's, it, it has been patented in 2010. It's a reflective technology and a passive optical device whose uh, principle is derived from quantum optics. The idea is with a succession of phase plates and free space propagation, we have the ability to transform any kind of Gaussian beam in whatever we want, as soon as it's a unitary transformation, a unitary basis into another unitary basis. So if you want more complex shape and multiple beam, mathematically, they always have a solution to modify this shape with more phase plates or free space propagation. The thing is, if you have to do that in transmission, you have a lot of insertion losses and it's not so easy to align. That's why Kylab decided to to have the device in reflection in a compact way. So we realize a unique texture surface, a unique face place, plate, sorry, and the free space propagation is done with the help of only one mirror, as you can see on the, on the, right, uh, on the right picture. Uh, we can have much more inputs, we can combine them or divide them into uh, only one or separate channel. So we have several optical uh, fiber at the input. We modify each input with the face plates and the free space propagation until the output of the component. And we can also uh, modify the fiber element to free space optic if we, we would like to. And you, you can have like that a lot of different configuration which correspond to a different application. And this component allow uh, us to propose optimal space division multiplexer or the multiplexer for free space and fiber telecom uh, application. So 
just to summarize what we we can do with uh, with the MPLC, we can provide any kind of model basis. Uh, the main one, uh, like we, you can see on, on the side, but all the new ones, if we need, we need it's with high model selectivity. I mean, crosstalk and a large number of mod. Uh, today, our maximum is 45 mod, but it's not a limitation. We can provide a, a multiplexer with more mods if we need so, if we need to. Uh, the MPLC has limited losses. Uh, today we can reach a uh, max uh, with uh, um, insertion losses less than one dB per max. Uh, the technology is also polarization insensitive. Um, so we have the same polarization at the input stage than at the output of the components. It's compatible with a large range or, or range of wavelengths from visible to 10 micrometers and with all the techniques uh, such as uh, WDM. So it's very compact, as you can see on the bottom right picture. Uh, it's compatible also with harsh conditions, vibration, temperature, humidity, and compatible also with, uh, with mass, uh, mass production. So um, yeah, the last years, um, we realized a lot of demonstration and more and more research groups are working on it. Uh, the list includes uh, Nokia Bell Labs, uh, the Beijing University of Post and Telecommunication, and also, for example, the University of Southern California. And you can see uh, an exhaustive list of publications. Uh, the list is available on the on, on this slide. And feel free to contact me if you if you need and to have a, to have this list. I will be happy to to share it with you. So now it's time to show you how the component works. Uh, I'm going to, to switch to the step bench. Oh. Okay, great. So what we what we have in this breadboard, we prepared uh, a free space device uh, in order to observe some AG modes at the output of uh, our device. Uh, it's a standard free space Proterus with LCPC uh, connectors. We have also uh, SLD source, SLD for superluminescent uh, diode uh, source at 15, 15 nanometers at the input stage. We split it in uh, several channels and we can switch on or switch off uh, after uh, the channels. Uh, in front of it, we have a sphere cam to, to observe the modes and we will share the screen in a few seconds in order to, to show you uh, what we are going to, to, to obtain. So maybe, Marie, if you can switch on uh, the, the channel where they are all on. And yeah, maybe we can uh, display uh, this. Um, yeah, so normally everybody can see uh, what we are going to, to obtain. So this is what we obtain at the, at the output of the component where all the channels are on. And now we can observe uh, each individual channel so this is the fundamental Gaussian, uh, Gaussian mod. And we are going to, to see also all the AG mod, so AG01 for this one. OK, AG02. As you can see, the modal purity is, uh, is quite nice. And the, the, the mode size for this kind of device is around uh, 300 micrometers. OK. So I don't know if you have some question or if you want to spend uh, more time on it. Otherwise, I propose to, to continue the presentation. So um, now it, I'm going to, to get back to my... So, we talked about performances earlier. I also uh, wanted to show you how we characterize our components before sharing some results with you. Uh, for this characterization, 
we still have a superluminescent super diode source. It's the same source that, uh, that before. And we have after a switch, and we use a MAX and a DMAX devices that we connect together. And we use a power meter with several uh, input at the end. Uh, we measure after two key uh, parameters, the insertion lasses, of course, and the, the, the crosstalk. And we call this, um, this configuration the back-to-back -back configuration. Um, to visualize the performances, we put all the data together, together um, in order um, in a matrix where we can check easily at this uh, two back-to-back -back, uh, value. So we are going to to observe. So I don't know if you can see it, but this is. On the on the left side of your of, of your screen, um, the max. Uh, so we can see the max and the max, and between them we use a OM2 multimode fiber in the middle in, in, in a range. Uh, this uh, Proterus devices can max and demax 10 mods too, the same mod that you can observe be before. And for our part, we have automated the measurement. So uh, we can quickly display uh, display the matrix. Um, so yeah, so as you can see on the screen, we obtain uh, the cross stall matrix with the insertion losses uh, in dB on on the right side. Uh, the the value it's a high milliwatt for the cross talk. It's not uh, in dB, but you can observe uh, the mean and the worst uh, cross talk value value. Uh, just uh, below the, the matrix. So these values are for the max and the dmax pass. So if you need to recover the insertion losses by, per max, you have to divide by two um, the, the insertion loss value. And if you need to have your crosstalk value for one device, you have to subtract a 3 dB for, for each value. And here, for example, the mean value uh, is uh, minus 24 dB for the crosstalk and minus 20 dB uh, for the worst crystal value. And uh, if we move the fiber, I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. Thank you, Marie. You, you can see that the power distribution change a little bit, but in a really, really small way. And the global performances are very stable all along, uh, all along the time. Thank you. So, to continue, I, I wanted to, to show you two examples of this uh, for two different fiber. Um, um, the first one is another kind of fiber. It's a, a grade index few mod one where we max 21 different AG mods. You can see them on the left side of the slide. And we obtain interesting performances in terms of cross talk and insertion losses. Um, the thing that we would like, I wanted to, to highlight, uh, is the fact that you can see the phenomenon of mod mixing for direct detection directly on the matrix in red. And indeed, as you probably know, mods in the same group group tend to to mix and exchange in, in energy between between them. And this is a phenomenon that is very uh, much unique to circular, circular fiber. We'll see at the end uh, of the present presentation some solution for that, that we implemented, that we can implement uh, in our device. And the other solution is to use current detection and MIMO to increase, again, the number of uh, independent channels. Uh, this is a really custom fiber, which is an elliptical fiber one. As the interest of this kind of fiber is to re remove this mixing mod phenomenon effect in direct detection uh, configuration directly inside the fiber. You can have much more SDM independent channel, as you can see on the power matrix. Um, and we obtained a really good result with this type of fiber with mean insertion losses uh, close to 1 dB per max. And this really good losses performances will now available for all of our uh, customers we needed. It's a kind of option that we can propose for our standard or more custom devices. 
Um, as we explained before, the ability to propose good performances in a stable component is also a, a major criteria to evaluate a space division multiplexer. The last year, thanks to our development for aircraft area, we proposed MPLC compatible with harsh environments such as large uh, temperature range. We keep stable performances in terms of uh, insertion losses and cross talk over four cycles of three hours uh, inside a climatic chamber installed uh, in our labs. And we, the, yeah, the, the performances are, are really stable as you can see on the, on the, on the graph of the, of the slides. So, so what we can propose to, to, to you, we have three packages type for different application and product complexity. And product complexity. Uh, the um, product Proteus S, the simplest configuration, proposed a kind of initiation to the SDM with several uh, reference of fiber, standard telecom uh, OM1 to OM5, stamp index of reading uh, index uh, 1 uh, for FMF and multimode fiber. The custom Proteus are called Proteus C, C as custom. The fiber configuration proposed to max more modes or a specific number of modes in all kinds of fiber, in different kinds of uh, wavelengths. And for that, we analyze uh, your requirement and we try to help you in order to give you the proteins which correspond to your fiber uh, request. And finally, we have a free space version. This is uh, the one that we use uh, for the live demonstration. And as it's in free space, we can play it with other settings. Such, such as an, the type of mod or the polarization, we can, for example, integrate polarization maintaining a single mod fiber at the input of our component. And we have um, also new features this year to, to improve the performances of the standard uh, devices. Of course, we can increase the number of modes up to 45 and mod, but we can also work on the reflectivity of uh, our device and propose option to which uh, best insertion losses lower than one dB per max. And in direct detection, we can also, um, uh, as we have mod mixing phenomenon in circular fiber, we can also manage and we can propose mod group multiplexing uh, or mod group demultiplexing. I will present an example in the next slide uh, and a use case with Nokia. And we propose also integrated and embeddable version is the place or the environment uh, have major uh, issues for you. And we developed also custom uh, special range of wavelengths uh, from um, 500 nanometers to, to 10 micrometers. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide, but I want to show you that we have a portfolio portfolio with existing references for fiber components, but also for free space uh, configuration. The main things to know is that for any standard, low or high custom application, we are uh, able to adapt to your, to, to your request. Uh, I wanted to finish uh, this webinar session uh, with one use case. We show uh, a new skill of the, of the component. And as I said uh, before, where we are in di direct detection configuration, we observed the mixing mode phenomenon uh, in, the it's in the fiber, uh, not because of the MPLC, it's a, it's, a, it's a fiber phenomenon. And because of it, we have to sum the output signal of each mode of the same order to recover uh, the information. And we have a solution for that. Uh, we work with Nokia Bell Labs in order to, to realize a mod group uh, multiplexer uh, the idea is to propose multi-mode fiber at the output of the DMAX in order to realize uh, the sum of the signal from the mode of the same order passively with our MPFC device. It's still compatible with all the multiplexing technique. And like that, we realize a 14.5 terabit per second uh, bidirectional uh, transmission uh, with this technique based on four mods uh, group transmission at 15, 15 nanometers. And you can observe the four mod groups on the, on the right side of the slide. And this use case show you some possibilities and options that we can uh, implement uh, if you have 
a specific idea for your for your architecture. So to conclude uh, this webinar and before uh, the question session, uh, as you can see, um, the MPLC was first proposed in 2010 and, and today attracts more and more interest uh, since then. Uh, it has application to many fields, not only for SDM, but for the SDM, it's really, really useful. And Skylab's component Proterus is a powerful SD, uh, space division multiplexer that can address any time of spatial mode, can reach very limited uh, losses uh, and a really high model selectivity. It's very compact. The smaller version is uh, 30 by 60 by 50 nanometers packaging and can be compatible also with, uh, with harsh uh, condition. So thank you uh, for your attention. We can switch to, to the question session. Do the 300 micrometers apply to the size of the, of the camera? So yeah, this, this camera, uh, yeah. Size of the camera. Yes. So the so you, you have a raised size here for during the, the live demonstration, uh, which is close to 60 600 micrometers. So you have maybe a, a larger uh, larger beam size uh, at the, um, uh, just in front of the of the sensor. But yeah, we there is no optics between the space division multiplexer and the square camera itself. So it's just uh, free space between um, the, the MPLC and the, and the sensor device. Maybe we can, yeah, just to show you. As we have time, I can move a little bit the, the, the camera just to re-explain the, the bench. So yeah, we just uh, hide the, the, um, the output light with just uh, with just a tube, but there is nothing uh, between these uh, these two devices. Okay, there I can see that there is no other question, but in any case, feel free to 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 write me. I'll end you with pleasure, and yeah, thanks. Thanks again for for, for your attention, and um, have a nice have a nice day, everyone. Bye.